All Eyes on Fishing with Mitch Peterson, Josh Sheldon, and Brad Qualley, leading you to the next level. Everybody, welcome back to All Eyes on Fishing. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Plan C. What? <laughs> plan C? <laughs> yeah, Plan C. Wait, is that what you take when you're with your girlfriend? Oh, no, wait, that's Plan B. Sorry. <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> yeah, <stupid. laughs> it's going to be one of he those know, nights. It was way after his time. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Plan C. What the heck are we talking about, Plan C? Well, we're going to make you a better fisherman by fishing Plan C. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. I, well, I am serious. We did this. Well, we've done it in the past quite a bit, but I'm telling you, last week when we were on the water, we did three days of Plan C. As tournament directors. Yes. And not not participants, but as tournament directors. <laughs> yes. Tournament director Mitch but Peterson. So, so what we wanted to do, and, and we've done this before, and it's hard to do when you know where fish are and you want to get to your spot and go catch right. them. But what happens when so, or, or it's just packed with boats or the fish aren't there? Now you're going to go to your next spot, Plan B. Oh, right. So what we're talking about is... Unless you're fishing for cash. I mean, if you're out there competitively fishing, of course you want to get on your fish. But to make yourself better, if you're decided today or right now it's a live bait, we're jigging, nope, don't jig. Go do something different. Learn that lake. Learn something different and just know whatever plan C is, what you're scratching your head to try to do later on in the day when you're not figuring out the bite, start with that. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. Right? It, seriously, and, it well, makes what, you better. Yeah, you go to the bait store, they have no, don't have leeches. Shit, what am I going to do oh, now? Oh, that's right? plan A. Yeah, mm -hmm. no leeches. So now you're like, oh, crap. All right, well, then I'll take uh, mi you know, minnows. Yeah, we're, we're down on those, too. Uh, uh, okay, so now you got two dozen crawlers. Now what do you do? Right? You, I mean, you go, you, you, yeah. you're you going to do slip bobbers was going to be the plan. And we're mm -hmm. going to slip bobber leeches over rocks. Well, we were going to start off. Our plan A was we were talking about pulling bouncers because we just know it's going to go right. crazy. And we're going to pull bouncers. And we decided, no. We didn't pull one bouncer. We yep. ended up uh, casting uh, into, uh, well, we were casting some shallows, but then we also ca cast some sa some saddles. Yep, drop offs. And we did slip bobbers. And where we would normally fish, um, we would have been pulling bouncers through there, and we know we were going to hammer them, yep. right? But we went to spots there was nobody. I'm talking, we haven't even fished these areas before, but we rolled up and we said, we're going to try it. We're going to learn this lake different. We're going to learn a different technique this time of year. Yep. So we have plan A, B, and now C. Yep. Well, we had to. The entire tournament field went up to the other end of the lake. Yes. So we had to go. And to that's the where we would have went. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If that's we absolutely fishing, where we would have gone. We knew. I mean, we knew the yep. fish are on the West End yep. uh, this time of year. Yep. <laughs> you know, the thing that I love about plan C's a lot of times, hmm. Hmm, they work. They were, well, know, sometimes they work better. Yeah, they do. You, you know, know, I learned this a long time ago, too. A affects B affects C. And so, yeah, somewhere down the road, because you're plan A and mm -hmm. plan B not panning out, right. and you got to go to San, plan C, it, it all falls together. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of guys get comfortable in what they're doing right now, right? Well, Mitch said, growing up in Minnesota, year after year, season would open. He goes and he gets, you know, minnows, and they're going out and they're doing Lindy Rig or they're doing uh, Slip Bobbers or whatever, and that's what they do at this, you know, same couple yep. spots every year, year after year, and the fish are always there. And, well, what if they're not there? So if you went right. back to Minnesota, Heron Lake Erie, with your buds, mm -hmm. and and it was right now when they're, it's just opening here in Minnesota, and you went there and said, no, we're going to go cast shorelines with uh, – Gulp jerk baits or, or whatever, yeah. whatever it is. What would they say? And we're not going to those like, points. They'd look at me like I was crazy. Like, <laughs> well, like no, we're nuts. not. We're, <laughs> but we got these crawlers I just dug up out of the garden, <laughs> right? And we're going to use them, yeah. right? <laughs> so, what would what would you say to them? No, let's like, no. You guys watch this. <laughs> yes, yeah. we would go and we would catch them, and they'd be like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> because yep. it makes me think of your buddy that never pulled bouncers before. Yep. They don't pull bouncers up there. Or mm -hmm. from your, your your neck of the woods, I mean, your group of friends where they fish your local mm -hmm. lake, they just didn't. They're like, no. So we gave him a plan C, maybe D, and said, try it. And he came back a week later and was like, holy cow. Jesus. Wow. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's right? like, holy yeah. man, that was yeah. just killing him. I'll, yeah. I'll never forget when I told him about it. Like, yep, and right behind the bouncer, you know, two-foot lead, blah, blah, blah. Told him the setup. He's like, 
those fish will come right up behind that big chunk of lead and drag it up. I was like, yep, yep. they sure will. Yep, sure. And he, I could just hear it in his voice like, yeah, right. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure enough. And then what happened? You got <laughs> the next phone, phone call was a little different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, yep. what did he say? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It, it's one of those things where uh, it's, you know, uh, fishing a lot of times going for plan C. Um, if I get extended periods of time, to be able to fish or pre-fish for a tournament, right? So instead of our usual couple days or three days, let's say I do get four days or even crazy five days, right? There's usually a day or two in there where it's it's the Plan C day. Mm-hmm. It's well, we've we've looked at all the spots we've identified on the map or, or the spots that we know because we fished this like before. We've gone through. Now let's take a, a half a day or three quarters of a day and, and let's go fish some areas we have never fished before. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's go. I mean, everybody, like, you sit there, and, and you're at the start, right? And you watch 100 boats fire past this certain cove. All of them. Yep. Right past it, because it's close to the start. Well, let's go in there and see. I, I, there's a guy that I don't know fishes our tournaments. He's exactly like that. He fishes the end of the lake closer to where the start is and, um, and does really well. And, and, you know, if we have a 120-boat field, 118 of them fire right past, and he trails off you know and goes back and fishes that side of the lake yep. by himself the whole day and he ends up coming in with you know big bags so yeah. it really is uh it's fun too i mean this weekend we had a blast we were all fishing i mean different stuff different things because we didn't care right it was like well let's go out and fish yeah. you know poor mitch was down verifying fish and <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah we did get to fish a little bit more yeah than, we fished than a mitch, more, i but... tell you that it this it was a perfect thing though so <clears throat> where we were fishing I mean, typically it's a it's a jig crawler bite, right? right. Five bait, um, or we're pulling bouncers and, and crawlers, mm-hmm. and yeah, well, we we set up with our jigs and mm-hmm. and we, we we were casting a little some plastics tipped with crawler, yep. and then I was fishing just a lead head with a jig or lead head jig with a crawler vertical jig and casting it. Right. And Junior here throws out a slip bobber, same area, this little bowl we were fishing, and oh my god, I mean, it, it was a four to one, five to one. It, easy easy and yeah. it's not that josh is the master at slip hoppers <laughs> i'm not gonna lie he, he's got a dial but no they preferred they that bait right you know up you know six eight inches wherever you had it set yeah, at subtle up off the bottom just hanging there yep. not doing anything versus you know even even fishing our jigs real real slow and and cautious like they, they all day long you yep. slip bobber and it didn't matter where we we went to spots we had never fished before because we wanted to stay out of the guys that were fishing for cash, right? Yep. But I tell you what, because we did that, I probably got about five more spots now. That I would go, oh. I'm like, yeah, those are good spots. Right. Well, and I know and, one thing, too. We, we go out there jigging because that's the bite. That's right. plan A. I'm going straight to plan C just to see. Yeah, uh, right. Because I to love test fish, it out. fishing a slip bobber. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. Well, and plan C also isn't just how you fish. It's where you fish. You know, and like we were talking about, you're somewhere else, but – we combined all of Plan C. Remember on, on uh, I don't remember what day it was, but we were fishing an area that we, we had fished before, but was uh, with the water level being so high, was way under. And I was like, guys, I just want to do crankbaits. Just, I just want to pull crankbaits through the tops of these trees. Let's just make a couple passes before the end of the day, and then let's go. And uh, I don't know what it take us, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I think, on that one when we got them all out finally for us to catch a fish and then another one, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so mm-hmm. it was, uh, it was kind of crazy. Cause it was, that's what we were doing. We're like, all right, well, we, we know we could catch fish doing bouncers, let's say throughout this area, but man, I don't know. Something tells me that we could get crankbait fish on crankbaits here. Yeah. We threw out the crankbaits and it didn't take long before we were catching fish on crankbaits. We just didn't fish it long. Right. No, we, we, we didn't have fish, time. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, we, we ran out of like time and the weather minutes. got bad. Yeah. And yeah. probably caught five. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. I mean, and it was <laughs> you know, quick, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and we were hung up a bunch of times. If we wouldn't have gotten hung up in the trees, we would have been, you know, we went back to go get baits and stuff. We would have probably done even more. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were just trying to fill out the spot and see how high the trees came up in the water column and all that. And man, I'll tell you what, once we did start to dial it in, it, it was it would have been, I think, just nonstop. But that was probably even Plan D at that point. I mean, <laughs> right. I think that was the third or fourth thing we'd done that day. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, you're right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and you you meant, you touched on a little bit. It doesn't necessarily mean that you, let's say it is a bottom bouncer bite, right? And you're, you're like, I'm going to fish bouncers because I know I'm going to catch them. Yep. Well, that's okay. Plan C can be different locations. Go find your right. other parts of the lake. So you can either change up presentation, but fish other areas. Because what it's going to do is just make you learn that lake better instead of always going to the memory of where fish are 
go find more. And yeah. you you'll, and then you'll find spots that, okay, there's a lot of trees here. I, I can't fish my normal presentation here, but I wonder if I can cast above them, yep. you know, or whatever it yep. is. Well, there's yep. that. I think this, that's, this is the time when you find that spot within a spot, right? You, mm-hmm. you know you fished this area before, but uh, I've never quite wound all the way to the back of that little cut. I, I, haven't, I haven't quite, uh, you know, uh, let me see because I, I know for me a lot of times I'll start wandering back. And it starts coming up and getting shallow. You'll turn. And, and it's like, yeah, I, you know, because it, it can get tight to turn around in some of those, right? Mm-hmm. Or either that or you're oh, trying yeah. to back out. And um, so I'm like, ah, eh, you know, and you turn around and you maybe pitch a couple plastics up in there or something and turn around and come but out. But now you should park there and cast and plastics. You park for there, it. cast plastics, cranks. I mean, we were, we were catching fish, uh, you know, doing some crankbaits coming around offshore. And that slip bobber. I mean, if you sneak up into some of these cuts and throw that slip bobber back in there, some of them are deeper than you think, you know, especially for our lakes. But even if it's a flat bowl, prairie type lake, or it's a, a Michigan lake where you've got some rocky structure or submerged island, you're on the backside of it. Man, that's a, a you know, we were, we found a lot of good spots just kind of sneaking back. And just think. exploring. It and, is. And really, learning it. Well, you know? you know, and that's kind of what Plan C comes to me when we're talking location is you don't know what you don't know. Right. So, so just everybody picture yourselves on your, your, your favorite lake. You've got, we you've got all your spots. Dude. We totally need t-shirts. We need, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> no, Mitchisms. We, we need, yeah, so. he comes up with some. It's pretty deep though. Think about it. Hey, it's, it's, it's almost too deep. Yeah. But, but okay. Well, so picture yourself on your, on your, your traditional lake, right? Oh yeah. You know, the walleyes are up on that flat. Right. They're over on, on this break, that point, blah, blah, blah. Right. This time of year, all that. Uh, so you think you know where the fish are i promise you the walleyes are in way more places ah, than what you and all everybody that fishes that lake has realized and that's what i mean by plan c mm-hmm. like if you're you've got that traditional flat that's maybe 12 feet deep you know it's big 100 100 yards long mm-hmm. and you, you like to drift over it you know lindy rigging or whatever yeah well, it will do you ever fish super shallow up mm. in the trees, up in you know the submerged r- rushes and right. and weeds and stuff like that. Have you ever even done it? Right. Probably not, because you catch plenty of fish out there on that flat that you fish over and over, over and over. Right. But what With happens? What happens when you go there and the pressure is on that island? And the fish have pushed off. Now you've had. Now you're like, I don't know what to do. It's a slow day. Well, we didn't catch as many. I mean, right. that's usually the usual boat result. traffic, and I see it. You see it on 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 social media postings. Well, the Boat traffic was terrible. We got forced yeah. off the lake. No, you didn't get forced off the lake. You got forced off your spot, and you didn't go find another spot on your lake. Yeah. And that's the difference, right? There's nothing better than we have two local lakes that we fish a lot, mm-hmm. right? And we've probably fished, well, almost every square inch of it at some point or another. But because over the years, uh, we forced ourselves because it's we're in the Denver metro area. You can imagine the pressure, right? and they're they're not yeah. big, and there's tons of pressure to go there's with tons the of fact pressure. That there's not so big. we ended up years ago developing plan C's and D's because there was already too many boats there. It was just not dodging to jet fish. skis. So we're like, well, it's open over there. So we just started fishing areas that we've mm-hmm. overlooked before. And now they're some of our most productive ones that right. we go to, right. yes. and, and and it makes you it makes you better. Uh, a better fisherman because you understand that lake better, yeah. but uh, it gives you choices. It gives you options, yep. but I, I'm well, telling there's you, fish, there, there's fish near there. If it's not right there, it's going to be somewhere near there and they're going to be biting on something, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not going to be just this barren place of water that a fish never swims through. It's going to be something. Um, mm-hmm. I can remember a long time ago, I went to Michigan um, to see my aunt and um, uncle and they were up on a, they live on a lake and it's a chain of lakes and we were going through uh, my uncle's pontoon, and we're going through these chain of lakes. And, you know, not my preferred way to fish, but I wanted to fish. It's Michigan. Heck, yeah, let's go fish, right? And uh, I remember getting out on the lake, and a lot of those viney, viney weeds, I don't know what you call milfoil. them. Milfoil. Is it milfoil or something? They were growing all the way up to the surface. Well, I had not fished at that point very much water that looked like that mm-hmm. so i was very frustrated because i was used to doing bouncers or whatever and you couldn't do that you couldn't get mm-hmm. it to the bottom if you got it to the bottom you couldn't get it through the weeds or whatever so i started casting and, and just pulling jigs through it and like you guys were talking about in previous podcasts it would get hung up and i'd rip it through and i that's most often i get a walleye or a northern or something i learned a ton well now i fish lakes that have that all the time so mm-hmm. now fishing it is just 
second nature. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, let's go. I look for it. Let's go do it. Yeah. So now I want to get my fat butt back to Michigan, and I want to fish those lakes again because now mm-hmm. I've got a thousand different ways to fish that type of cover. As before, I was at a complete loss. I mean, I, I was completely I know lost. that one time uh, me and my dad went up, and we were fishing up in Canada. We And I don't remember the name of the lodge we are at, but – when, when you left the lodge, we rented one of their 16-foot boats at 25 horsepower. Mm-hmm, it had right. no electronics or nothing. So we yeah. just didn't know. But, uh, yeah, we're going to give her hell and go. So I was talking to the guy that owned the, the lodge, and he goes, I'm telling you, right when you get out of it, because you had, like, probably about a quarter mile or so, like, slewed before you got out of the lake. Mm-hmm. He goes, right when you get out, there's going to be a bunch of rock croppings right off to your left side. He goes, if you uh, the the slough here has northern is like there's no tomorrow. He goes, but once you get out there, those those walleye are just going to be stacked up on that first uh, on that first point. And mm-hmm. it was obvious. We came around. I was like, oh, there they are. Well, <laughs> I, was I can't like, see them, but I can feel them. I, can and I was feel like, it. that's the point he's talking about. Well, the whole time we were out there, we saw two other boats the whole time, and there's one sitting right there. I'm like, really? I mean, this is day one. Yeah. Right? So we didn't know the lake at all. So there's a, there's an island that's sticking out probably about oh, five minutes away uh, with a 25 horse. I said, let's go cast that island. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. <laughs> we clubbed him. I'm talking 100 fish days. And when I came back, he goes, well, I've never made it. This guy lives there and has a, <laughs> has a service. And he's like, I've never made it to that island. I never needed to. And I'm I like, just stop at one of the close places. And I'm like, dude, fish. I go, look at all these photos that we took. And he's like. Uh, I'm going to be telling people to go there because it was so big that you could fish 30 boats around right, it, right? Right. And this little rock point that he was talking about, you, I could have went in there, but it would have been kind of cheesy to go right up on this right. guy when you have a whole lake. Right. <laughs> right. So we went over there, and we, we fished that whole island for five days, Yeah. the whole thing around it, and we caught more fish than we could you can ever imagine. Yeah. Well, you, you, and that's, the, that's really a, a really good point when you're talking about it is what if your electronics go out? Right. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, something happens and you don't have what you usually have. So now you're kind of going on your instinct. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the shoreline here looks pretty good. If this shoreline continues off into the water, let's see. Let's go feel it out and see how deep and let's find these fish. I mean, you know, I still do a lot of that. Look, you know, I think we all do. Right. You look and you say, ah, that looks pretty good over there. Then you take your electronics and you verify it. But if you don't, you better start, you know, you better have a plan C when it comes to your equipment. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, fishing that tournament a few years ago where my uh, all my batteries went out, except the main, except the, the crank battery, right? So I had no electric. So I used drift socks galore hanging off m- my boat and the kicker motor to get me slow enough to for the presentation I was doing and then taking second in the tournament. Well, I was I was screwed, but that was plan like Z because <laughs> yeah. I mean I had nothing. I went and bought batteries, wore them out. I didn't know the charger had broken. Mm-hmm. The charger looked like it was still working. I put new batteries in, and those didn't work. So yep. I was way screwed, and a few hundred bucks into it. So, but you had done other kinds of fishing with drift socks and stuff that yes. that gave you that ability right. to do it exactly. And I'm telling you right now, if you wouldn't have done that, that's what we're talking about. Get out and do something different because you got proficient at it before you had an issue. Right. 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 And so I knew when I had to put down the kicker and I didn't have all the fancy, you know, troll, uh, whatever the Mercury one is, but uh, troll master, any of that. I, I couldn't turn down my RPMs. I and I had a, a throttle. So it wasn't a, a um, twist throttle. It was one that was, you know, back up by the, the steering wheel. I mean, she's had barely bumping the gear and that bad boy was off. So <laughs> I had to really figure out a way to yeah. you know, De- slow deal it with down. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's important to know. It's like, um, you know. You have to be able to do all sorts of things, mm-hmm. and not only just. But you have to force place, yourself. But to you do have them. to force yourself. You to have find. to I had force myself to do it at other lakes. I, I actually learned how to do the drift sock trolling thing at McConaughey, because you had to. Well, I was running out of battery. I couldn't use my battery all day. Mm-hmm. It was killing me. So I had to use gas for a little bit if I wanted to use battery for most of the day. Well, I know. Twenty years ago, when we first started fishing tournaments, or really got into walleye fishing. You did pretty much the same couple things. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're going to jig. We're yeah. going to Lindy we're gonna rig. Pull crankbaits. Yep. And now um, it's there's so much in our arsenal because we forced ourselves to uh, – tournament fishing really makes you do that, though, because yeah. you really yeah. have to. Because you got to fish any condition, any Yes. Time. You can't be like, nah, it's kind of crappy day. I'll go tomorrow. Yeah. You, know, you have to fish. So, yeah. But we've learned how to do numerous different things, and um, it's really been beneficial. That's what we want you guys to do. Yeah. Force yourself to learn other stuff because 
there's so many great presentations out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know, you just have to take the time to do it. Dude, it, it all comes back around. You don't know what right. you don't know. You right? don't. <laughs> you, you don't know. Look, look at the resort owner up in Canada. That's hilarious. Yeah. Dude, Here, here's an island. You know, what is that? A uh, half mile, maybe? It's about a half mile. Yeah, so not very far. Yeah. And I'm never he's to go that far. never gone there. Never. He didn't know. He didn't know. Because he didn't know. Yeah. No. no he there didn't. we go. I'm envisioning a red T-shirt with a white silk screen print of Mitch's head with his hat cocked back on his head. And it, and it Tru- says Trucker Mitchism. style. Yeah. yeah, trucker style. It says yep. Mitchism. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you And in the back it says you can't catch him from the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Hotcakes. <laughs> Order Hot yours cake. today. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Yeah. Sure enough. Yeah, that Minnesota comes out, don't yep. you know? Oh yeah, yeah. sure enough. Can't help it. Can't yeah. Help it. No, but seriously, guys, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. But uh, get out and fish first of all. But then think about when you're going out there, what your typical day is. Force yourself to do something yeah. different. I mean, and, and if you if you end up spending a couple hours and you don't catch anything in these new locations, trying different things, don't give up on it. Right. Go catch your fish. Do it how you were going to do it that day. Go back to plan A. Mm-hmm. Right. But. The next time you go out, find a different scene. Figure it out because yep. you will make yourself a better fisherman learning how to do multiple techniques, doing stuff different at different times a year. I'm telling you. Yep. It, Don't get comfortable. No. Nope, because exactly. it'll, it'll, it'll hurt you in the long run, you know, because mm-hmm. at some point your spot's going to have a boat. At some point, the bait store's not going to have leeches or minnows. At some point... The fish won't be there. The fish won't be there. You know, the lake will have come up or dropped. And, I mean, or, or the cold front will have moved through, and they're just they're just not biting there. It's a windy day. Yep. Whatever it is, there's Whatever a multitude of factors. Yep. But get get out there on the water and figure out your plan C. Hey, from everybody at All Eyes on Fishing, I'd like to thank you guys a lot for following us and sharing us. And, and uh, we've had a lot of good success, and it comes from you guys. Make sure you continue uh, to follow us on our... Check out our website at All Eyes on Fishing. Uh, dot com but your questions we love having them we get a ton of them we yep. love it all eyes on fishing at gmail.com um we want your questions and we want your suggestions for podcasts yep. check out the next level yeah you guys get a chance check out the next level if you like uh, our normal podcast it's an hour hour plus on uh going into things like this and and really dissecting it and going into it in yeah, greater detail deep. and it's and it's like it's it's like a pack a couple crawlers a month yeah. it's nothing yeah but we really do dive into it so yeah. hey thanks a lot guys this has been all eyes on fishing thanks for listening if you like what you heard go ahead and subscribe to the next level and you can hear longer podcasts and more information on all of your favorite topics and check us out at all eyes on fishing.com for apparel blogs and other information don't forget to check us out on facebook twitter instagram and youtube all eyes on fishing leading you to the next level